What if we tell you a peace treaty was about to be signed between Russia and Ukraine a few months back, and then it was cancelled when Washington DC issued a threat to Zelensky? We will tell you all about it, but before that, if you're a fan of non-corporate funded free news and analysis, you've landed on the right YouTube channel. Okay, let's begin. In a recent article published on Substack, esteemed journalist and Pulitzer Prize winner Seymour Hirsch disclosed that negotiations to resolve the conflict in Ukraine were thwarted by U.S. intervention. According to Hirsch, these negotiations poised to commence months prior amidst the anticipation of Russian President Vladimir Putin's re-election and weakening of Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky's military position were halted due to threats from U.S. authorities. Specifically, the U.S. purportedly warned Zelensky of discontinuing $45 billion in annual non-military funding should he proceed with the negotiations. Harsh's source within the U.S. intelligence community indicated a bleak outlook for Ukraine's success in the conflict, suggesting that Ukraine's chances of victory are minimal. Furthermore, Harsh's report suggests President Joe Biden's unwavering commitment to counter the perceived Russian threat to NATO, inferring a strategic position that dismisses the likelihood of altering the U.S. stance irrespective of the conflict's progression. His narrative concludes with a grim prognosis for Ukraine asserting an inevitable conclusion that glorifies Putin's legacy in Russia, according to Hirsch's informant. In autumn 2022, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky enacted a decree stating Ukraine will not engage in negotiations with Russia under the leadership of Vladimir Putin. Contrarily, Russia has consistently expressed its willingness to seek a diplomatic resolution to the ongoing conflict. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov highlighted that Russia perceives no foundation for a peaceful transition, firmly asserting that sovereignty of Crimea and the newly annexed regions remains non-negotiable. This impasse underscores the deep-seated tensions and the complex dynamics at play, revealing the challenges in finding a pathway to peace in the region. The rationale behind the United States' apparent reluctance to see an end to ongoing wars is completely eliminated by by its record-breaking arms sales in 2023. According to a State Department report, the U.S. achieved an unprecedented $238 billion in overseas arms transactions. The sum is the culmination of two main avenues of military trade, foreign military sales, that is FMS, and direct commercial sales, or DCS. In a year marked by global conflicts, these figures highlight how Washington has capitalized economically on worldwide instability. The FMS sector alone soared to $80.9 billion, marking a 56% increase from the previous year and setting a new record. This trend underscores a disturbing shift in U.S. policy where the commercialization of warfare appears to be prioritized over the pursuit of peace. The Quincy Institute for Responsible Statecraft, a Washington-based think tank, has called on the Biden administration to align the country's arms sales policy with its long-term strategic interests. They advocate for limiting arms sales to situations that genuinely enhance the defense capabilities of allies without contributing to arms races or heightening the risk of conflict. The Institute specifically criticizes the AUKUS submarine deal and the rapid military aid provided to Ukraine, pointing out the absence of a robust diplomatic effort to de-escalate tensions. These actions, the report argues, could potentially provoke an arms race especially with China, and exacerbate the situation in Ukraine. Moscow has repeatedly warned the U.S. weapons supplies to Kiev merely prolong the conflict. Moreover, military experts express concern that such foreign arms sales could compromise U.S. security by fueling global conflicts, provoking adversaries, initiating arms races, and dragging the U.S. into unnecessary or harmful military engagements. Okay, so we see how Russia wants peace, Ukraine cannot opt for peace, and the US wants to make money at the expense of the two nations. So what is Europe doing here, especially nations like France, Germany, the Netherlands, Poland, Denmark, and Italy? The stupid countries are just paying the bill for a war that's not theirs and driving their countries towards economic catastrophe. This video that we published a few days back explains how bad the European situation really is.